game time. Hey everybody, welcome back to NTW. My name is Rob, and yes, it is game time. And we are playing World of Warcraft. We are going to get started on running some more dungeons today. On deck, we have the Stockades and Black Fathom Deep. We are running our Protection Paladin. And we're going to queue up and we're going to get started here. Okay, we have gotten queued up for the Stockade. That will be our first dungeon we run today. I thought I'd try something a little bit different today and give you a little bit of lore behind these dungeons and bosses and the reason why we run them. Uh, so here we go. The Stockade. Stormwind Stockades is a closely guarded prison built beneath the canals of Stormwind City. Warden Fellwater keeps watch over the Stockade and, and the highly dangerous criminals who call it home. Recently, the inmates revolted, overthrowing their guards and plunging the prison into a state of pandemonium. There we go, guys. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we are back here, and our first boss of the Stockades is Randolph Moloch. Randolph, Mo Randolph Moloch, convict number AC317. Randolph Moloch, charges, embezzlement, fraud, theft, and homicide. Moloch has been identified as the ringleader of the prison revolt. Given his connections to the House of Nobles, however, the use of lethal force to subdue this convict is not authorized. Randolph has a pretty easy move set to, uh, they don't cause a, a, a too much damage. Uh, wildly sw stabbing, sweep, and vanish. All in all, he's pretty much a tank as bank at this level. Not much you gotta worry about. Uh, the biggest part is when he'll do his vanish between 70 and 60% and 40 and 30% remaining health. He vanishes from sight and reappears behind a random player attacking them. All in all, pretty easy. Alright, we've come to our second boss now. This is Lord Overheat. Convict number NA. Lord Overheat. Charges, homicide, multiple counts. The natural disasters wrought by the cataclysm caused elementals to erupt in the to the prison complex, slaughtering half of the inmates upon arrival. Removing these incensed threats is imperative to restoring order to the stockade. Lord Overheat has three abilities. It's a Rain of Fire, it's an AoE, Fireball, Single Target, and Overheat, which is an AoE with a dot. Also, pretty easy, not a whole lot of significant damage coming out of Lord Overheat. And we come to our last boss of the Stockades. This is a guy we have seen before in the L1 Force. This is Hogger. Convict number SC55 Hogger. Charges. Too many to list here. Imprisonment. Imp imprisoning the Riverpaw leader has come at a high cost, including the partial binding of the Warden. Fearing that Hogger might escape, Fellwater has authorized. The Null's termination with extreme prejudice. Hogger here has three main moves. The Vicious Slice, Maddening Call, and Enrage. 
When Hogger reaches 30% remaining health, he enrages, increasing the physical damage dealt by 10% and melee attack speed by 30. Hogger's not difficult. Uh, mostly you just stand, you don't even have to move really, you just stand in front of him, you just take the beating and you dish it right back out. Uh, we've completed the stockades. We got ourselves a new ring that upgraded to epic level. And we'll go ahead and turn in the remaining quests and then we'll get out of here and we'll queue up for Black Fathom Deeps. Okay, we have queued up for Black Fathom Deeps. The description of Black Fathom Deeps states, once dedicated to the Night Elves goddess Alun, Black Fathom Deeps was thought to have been destroyed during the Sundering. Lost beneath the ocean. Millennia later, members of the Twilight's Hammer Cult were drawn to the temple by whispers of foul dreams. After sacrificing untold numbers of innocents, the cult was rewarded with a new task. To protect one of the old god's most cherished creatures, a pet that is still in need of nurturing before he can unleash his dark powers on the world. Let's get on it. Okay, we have come to our first boss in the Black Fathom Deeps. This is uh, Gamura. Gamura. When the Twilight's Hammer cult arrived, its followers roused and imprisoned one of the last peaceful creatures living in the Loon's Temple. The cult delighted in tormenting the giant turtle for years, flaying its mind and body until it succumbed to the madness. Na naming the beast Garuma, the cultists attempt to control its savagery in order to protect their lair. Uh, Garuma has got two abilities, Shell Shocker and Static Shock. Uh, static Shock is a violent energy erupts from Garuma inflicting 34 nature damage to a random enemy every three seconds. Now come to our next boss of Black Fathom Deeps. This is Dominia. When Lady Sarvas failed to provide magical protection, Dominia sacrificed the Naga to empower her own dark ritual. Unlike her predecessor, Dominia, mistress of the dark, has no fear of Akumal. Akumal <laughs> has no fear of Akumal, and hand feeds the beast. Countless innocents in order to carry favor with the old gods. Uh, Foul Tempest, he, she summons a, a Tempest that inflicts 38 damage every second to random enemies. And Maw of Death deals 92 damage to all enemies in a cone in front of the caster every half second for 2 seconds.
Okay, we have reached our third boss. This is Subjugator Coral. The Twilight Hammer Commander. Sorry, the Twilight Hammer Commander, their powerful enforcers, Subjugator Coral, to cleanse the case of anything not under their control. Galhast was first to fall under the crushing strength of Coral, who then seized control of the cave dwelling Murlocs. Coral left. Galhast's twisted corpse on display as proof of his dominance and now uses the Murlocs to, to hoard the possessions of those who perish in their caves. Leviathan's grip. Coral begins crushing an enemy, inflicting 92 physical damage every second for 8 seconds. Coral summons Akimal, Terror of the Deep, to feed. Okay, we're on our next boss here. This is Thruk. Thruk brings many valuable qualities to the Twilight's hammer, but intelligence is not among them. Convinced that slaying the Guardian of the Deep will reveal vast hordes of gold, Thruk's diminutive mind has no room to focus on anything else, and he will fillet the flesh of anyone who brings breaks his concentration. Thruk casts his fishing line, hooking a random enemy within 45 yards and pulling them to his feet. Thruk slams his weapon on the ground, inflicting 5,000 weapon damage to 5,000%. Sorry, inflicting 500% weapon damage to all enemies within 10 yards. This is our next boss, this is Executioner Gore. As Akimal's power grows, the need for more sacrifices increases. Dragging screaming innocents to their deaths is Executioner Gore's specialty, and the Twilight's Hammer has been making great use of his services. Uh, devouring Blackness, Executioner Gore immobilizes and drains 69 health every 0.8 seconds from an enemy, transferring it to himself over 6 seconds. Executioner Strike. Executioner Gore slams his axe to the ground, inflicting 34 shadow damage to all enemies and an additional 172 shadow damage to targets caught in the frontal cone. The impact creates a lingering vortex that inflicts 30 da shadow damage every second to enemies who remain with it. Okay, we are on our second to last boss. This is Twilight Lord Bathiel. The Twilight's hammer do not tolerate failure, so the first commander, Twilight Lord Bathiel, gave once he assumed control of the Black Feather Deeps was to throw Lord Kilris into the hungry maw of Akimal. 
Now the elemental ascendant commits the depths of his unfathomable power to raising the beast of the old gods and covering the world in black. Uh, first move is restorative powers. Portions of bath, uh, Bathel sprays across the room, summoning circles of restorative waters. Uh, and then piercing rain. Bathiel inflicts 21 frost damage every one second to random enemies. Uh, the he uh, restorative waters at healing absorption. Bathiel absorbs the restorative waters, healing himself for 5% of his health. And the watery burst, the restorative water explodes, dealing 34 frost damage to enemies within 5 yards. Okay, we are on our last boss. This is Akimaw. This is the guy we've been hearing about this whole dungeon. Akimaw is an ancient evil, carries within him a small measure of the old god's power. This three-headed hydra is greatly feared by his, for his mindless savagery and insatiable hunger for living flesh. But the Twilight's Hammer worships him as a divine sign of the old gods that the old gods will soon return. Akimaw, the devourer. Scion of the old gods will devour Azeroth unless stopped. Uh, he's got a wide variety of moves, including Venom, uh, Tearing the Void, Falling Debris. Uh, none you really got to worry about, including Crush. He's a pretty easy beat, as you can see. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of NTW. If you guys like what you see and you want to see more, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you get notified when a new episode comes online. Again, my name is Rob. Thank you guys very much for watching. And always remember, take care of yourselves.